Hello 3D animation students. In this lesson we are going to learn how to set keyframes for animated objects and their attributes. Use the graph editor to view and edit animation curves and modify the animation of objects using the graph editor and render a single image and a sequence of image and edit render attributes. Um, I highly recommend looking at some reference before you start your bouncing ball so you can get a feel of how many frames it should take. You should be able to find a lot of reference on YouTube so um, and I believe there's a few links to some good YouTube reference. Uh, so we're gonna start by first of all making sure we're on frame one and we're gonna create a sphere and I'm going to do a polysphere. And we're going to create a plane that will act as the floor. So, and then let's move it down a little bit so it's not going through the ball. Okay. And let's move the ball to over to the negative x. It doesn't really matter where. Um, I'm going to just try negative 15. And then we're going to move it on the plus y axis 15 units or so. Now, on the channel box, if you click on the words translate X and Y, you can right click and set a keyframe. Actually, there's a couple of coordinates given here that I didn't catch. It's just to follow the exact print, it's negative 21x and 27y. So that's way up there, which is fine. And now let's key those two channels. So let's start keying just the channels we need now. Right now all we need is x and y. Now, I'm going to move the time slider to frame 10, which is totally arbitrary. Um, you need to think about how fast your ball is going. Is it going 90 miles an hour or 2 miles an hour? Twenty-four frames equals one second, so a 10 second animation will be 240 frames. <clears throat> a good way to figure out the timing again is to bounce a ball in real life or look at um, reference on YouTube. Okay, now I'm going to move the ball to the ground, which will put it at zero, translate Y. And I'm going to set a keyframe on only the translate Y. So we're going to get the up and down motion first, and then we're going to get the left to right motion. Okay, now I'm going to go to frame 20. And this should be roughly half as high as the first bounce. But you don't really have to worry about it because we're going to learn about the graph editor and how to edit animations. So if this isn't exact, it's okay because it's easy to change later. So just move it back up the Y and right click and key the Y. 
these two keyframes after the first are only Y keyframes. They're not X keyframes or anything else. <clears throat> and that's important so that your X animation doesn't go all wonky. We just want it to go from from point A to point B on the X axis so it's just moving forward. Now I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and do one more at frame thirty even though the tutorial doesn't call for it. And I'm gonna key select it. I'm gonna narrow down my range. I'm just using that button right there to narrow down my range to about 30 frames. And what happens here is the keyframes are interpolated so that it eases in and out of all keyframes by default. And that makes sense for probably most motions, but this one motion where the ball hits the ground should not be a smooth transition. It should be a snappy hit and um, something that strikes it and then bounces right back up. Um, to get another visualization of this, there's there's num a number of ways to visualize your animation. Um, another way is by clicking Visualize. This might be under the animation menu here. I think it is. Yeah. Visualize. And we're going to choose. There's a number of different choices here um, that give you different visualizations of your animation. Um, we're going to choose Create Editable Motion Trail. And that gives us one way to visualize the animation. And you can see where it has keyframes. You can actually edit these keyframes. <clears throat> this is an actual motion path. Unlike when you're looking at the graph editor, I know it looks strikingly similar to this, but it's not the same thing. This is a motion path. The graph editor is not. So, and that actually creates a node as well, just so you know. In your outliner. Oops, I'm on modify. I thought I was on Windows. Outliner. So there's your motion path handle. Okay, I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to make another visualization. Um, you can do an animated sweep. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I think I chose the wrong one. Ghost selected. That's one, one animation uh, visualization that you can do. And it shows the next few frames and the previous few frames on, you know, whichever frame you're on. So, previous frames are in blue and the next frames are in a reddish brown color. And the problem is if you look at the diagram at the beginning of your tutorial, you should see the keyframes bunch up at the top, but they should not be bunching up at the bottom. That is slowing it down as it descends, which is not physics. Okay, so I think I can unghost all and turn that on. And another way to visualize is with animated snapshot, which will give you a picture of every single frame. And it actually makes them all selectable, interestingly enough.
So just different ways of viewing your animation. And now back to the graph editor under Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And let's select P-Sphere 1. And here's our Y keyframes. Okay, so this is where the rub is for this assignment. Um, you have to make the ball look like it's hitting the ground and bouncing back up. If you leave it like this, it's going to kind of float down and slow down as it gets closer to the ground, and then it floats back up, and the fastest parts will be right about at the middle of the animation curves, and that is not what we want. So the way to fix this is to select the keyframes that are on the ground and these work like Bezier curves. So if you have some familiarity with like the Adobe Pen Tool or curves in general, um, this will be familiar. And as it stands right now, um, the curves are going to be that's not quite doing what I want. That's what I wanted. There we go. The curves are going to be um, ease in and ease out. And basically, you can, you can put more weight on one side or the other, but you can't actually make it a corner. So you have to break the tangents in order to make it a corner. And that's this button right here. So once you do that, you can select them individually and bring it up kind of like that. So you've got this nice spike. So see the difference? It does not slow down the way this does. And I'll break that tangent as well. And I'm putting this next one here for the out point even though there's no more keyframes after that, you know, but you'll do a few more bounces than this. So, um, and you'll also um, want to make an environment, and um, if you're really clever and creative, some kind of story to it is fun. But as long as you give the ball a nice paint job and a nice environment to live in, and make sure you've got this on your animation graph, you should do well. So, if I play the animation back now, you're going to see a huge difference. You can see how it bounces more like a like a good ground strike. So, um, and I did mention earlier, I'm going to go back to that animation editor, is graph editor. Um, this second keyframe should be roughly half as high as that one. So, and each one should be about half as half as much on the on the y-axis, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit. <clears throat> okay, now the translate x, we want it. We want the ball to be moving forward as it um, as it goes along its journey. So um, I could grab that and keyframe it, but another way to do it is in the graph editor. Um, take the second keyframe and just move it over. This is a change in value across time. So starting at frame 0, it'll be at x negative 20. And by the time we get to frame uh, 30, I, I went a little past frame 30, but that's okay. Um, by the time we get to frame 30, it'll be at about plus 17 or so. So if I play it back now, looks like that. And I won't change your grade on the X motion, but I think it could be a little more realistic in this example. So I'm going to go back to the graph editor. 
and I am going to, I don't even need to break the tangent on this one, I'm just going to and I have it start at a regu uh, regular rate of change and then it's going to kind of ease out at the end there. So, so that it starts at a certain velocity but um, it doesn't speed up at any point. It just starts at the, at the maximum velocity and then slows down from there. So um, largely that is the primary thing you need to know about this assignment. Um, I will talk a little bit about squash and stretch. So let's show right about here we're going to want to squash it so let's show that. Um, <clears throat> the easiest way to do that is to set the two squash keyframes outside of this particular um, ground hit and and then in the middle keyframe have it squash so you can give it about two frames like go 8 10 12 you can give it about a two frame interval or about a if you want to do a one frame interval for a really fast squash and stretch you can do that uh, I'll do two frames so <clears throat> On the scale X, I'll set a key at frame 8 and frame 12. So that way it's going to start at 100% and then jump right back to 100%. And then in the middle, I'll give it a key frame and just squash it down a bit, maybe even a bit more than that. and key it again, make sure if you change the value to key it again. <clears throat> and that's going to be, as you can see, gives you a bit of a squash at the, at the hit there. Now there is an example of a bit of a trickier way to do this but more accurate. You are not required to do that but if you want to look at it there's an example of using a squash and stretch deformer to create this effect in a better way. So the last thing we got to do and this is going to potentially make our squash and stretch a little weird is we got to create a rotation on the z-axis. So I'm going to set the keyframe on the first frame of z, on the channel z on the first frame, and then I'm going to just go to the last frame and set the keyframe on z. And how far you want to rotate it is pretty much arbitrary. I should have done that after I set the value, but whatever. So key it again and the ball should rotate as it's moving forward. Oops, it's, ro it's rotating backwards. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go back to that and let's make that keyframe negative 180. Key selected. There we go. So now that's going to cause your squash and stretch to do this. It's going to turn on its side or on an angle a little bit and I'm not really worried about it for this assignment. Um, the way to solve that is in the more complex version. You'll see a scene in the in the unit that shows how to use a deformer instead of using the, the scale XYZ to achieve this the stretch. So, and then the nice thing about that deformer too is that it retains the volume. But again, it's this is all you're required to do, save for the fact that it needs an environment and a paint job and some lighting and a camera. This is all you're required to do um, for the assignment is just create the keyframes in the way I've shown. So, um, have fun.